The world is getting an overhaul for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. In the latest Q&A with the developers, they went into a few specifics on exactly what that is going to entail. What's more, this world refresh is also going to benefit Flight Sim 2020, which means that the current version of the sim is also going to get an overhaul in terms of planetary data. So what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that vast chunks of Earth are going to be dramatically improved. To start with, there's 200 terabytes of new data, which will be coming with the launch of Flight Sim 2024. A lot of this will be aerial data, and although Microsoft haven't gone into specifics on exactly what regions of the planet this will cover, 200 terabytes is a significant amount of data, so likely it recovers uh, much of the planet. Now, as said, much of this will also benefit Flight Sim 2020 directly, and the bottom line here is that the world data here, in terms of aerial data at least, is going to be shared between both versions of the sim. Now in other areas, the DEM, the digital elevation maps, and this determines the quality of the uh, terrain that we see in various places around the world. This is also set for a full refresh. That of course is coming with the Flight Sim 2024, that's where all of this is going to be applied to. But again, as the uh, two versions of the sim are sharing the same world, this will also benefit the 2020 edition. And then we come to the Bing source data, and this is the data we can see on Bing Maps. You only have to go to the web browser to see some of that. But the specifics here are a little bit more nuanced. Instead of um, one big update, the Bing source data is generally updated on an ongoing basis. So that means it has a very release cadence. Now moving away from the visual elements, we come to the World Hub. And the World Hub is the tool that uh, simmers can use to alter airports and runways, all that sort of thing directly in the sim. And these then will be released by Microsoft to the wider audience. Now the World Hub itself is still in a limited release, it's still in an alpha state. And the question came up as to whether or not and when this will get a full public release. Well the answer there is that currently there are no immediate plans to release the World Hub to a wider player base. And all of this comes down to again uh, Flight Sim 2024. So the details here, with the new aerial data being released along with the new sim, this is going to have some impact on at least a few of the placements of the ground-based objects, such as airports. And sometimes when aerial data is improved and changed, it can have an impact on the placements of the airports themselves, which means Microsoft needs to go in and make some adjustments. But what does this have to do with the World Hub? Well, by providing wider access to the World Hub to the community, it could mean that more airports actually get updated by simmers, and this in turn could lead to a bunch of wasted work. After all, if the aerial data updates then meant that some airports need to be fixed or moved, all the airports that players and simmers had just uh, corrected would then need to be corrected yet again, so it's something that Microsoft really want to avoid. Now currently, Microsoft say that the World Hub has been made accessible to around 1,200 people, and that's quite a lot, but they do say that the uh, updates are slowing down somewhat, so at some point they probably will release it to a wider audience, but it's got to be done at the right time. Now another news for Flight Sim 2024, there's the software development kit, and this is what allows third-party developers to build and release content for Microsoft Flight Simulator. At this point, there are of course a ton of products on the uh, in-sim marketplace. However, there's many questions about what the release of the new version of the sim will mean for the current products on the marketplace. Now, Microsoft has said that, well, Microsoft have confirmed that the SDK for Flight Sim 2024 will be sent out early to developers so that they can update their products to ensure that they will work with the new version of the sim. But at the same time, Microsoft also want and have confirmed that the new version of the sim is indeed going to be backwards compatible with the older version and all the products that come with it. So that means Microsoft have been working on making things so that products automatically work with both MSFS 2020 as well as 2024 without any additional work required on behalf of the developers. Yet at the moment, uh, then the testing phases of this and they've been working on it internally and whilst it isn't quite working yet, as they hope that it one day will, they say they are making great progress with it. And last but not least for Flight Sim 2024 are the airplanes. Now, Microsoft aren't ready to reveal any new information about what planes are coming with the sim just yet, 
but they did want to confirm a few of the planes that we've seen in the previous trader, as well as which developer is making them. So we're going to go through a couple of those right now. There's the CL-415, which is being made by Asobo, the H-125 helicopter, which again is by Asobo, and then we've got the Cessna 188. This is by Caronado. The Ericsson S-64 air crane is going to be made by Blackbird, and the one I'm really keen to try out is the A-10 Thunderbird, which is by DC Designs. Moving on, we come to a City Update 7. Now, this is a new City Update which was released just last week, so if you haven't been into the sim for a while, you may want to load it up and check out this new City Update. York Newman has said that this is the most highly rated City Update they have released so far. Now, the cities themselves apparently use a relatively new tin method to create the cities. In other words, they have improved the tech they use to build the cities. This one is certainly worth a look at, and on screen right here we can see the launch trailer. The update also includes a variety of cities. These are Stockholm, Nice, Monaco, Porto, Barcelona and Madrid. And meanwhile, City Update 8 has been confirmed as Las Vegas. In other update related news, we've got Sim Update 15, which again was released very recently. Microsoft have said that this has improved the overall stability of the sim. In fact, they claim that Flight Simulator now has a 98% stability rate. That's not only a high mark in the industry, but apparently makes it among the most stable of flight sims out there. The new version of the A320 at Neo also released, and that was made by Anybuilds. It's been made freely available on the InSim store, and that has been downloaded nearly 500,000 times, so obviously very, very popular. And talking of popular additions, there's the um, Top Gun Maverick DLC. This was the free DLC that was available last year, I think it was last year anyway. Uh, Microsoft previously announced that the Top Gun Maverick update will soon be removed from the InSim marketplace for those people who haven't yet downloaded it. However, Microsoft has spoken with Paramount and requested the DLC be available for longer. Right now then, this has been extended by another two months, however Microsoft are hoping that this could perhaps be made even longer. Unfortunately though, at the moment, there's no further confirmed details on that, but we're safe to know that the uh, DLC is going to be available until the end of July. So there we have it. That's all the latest for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Do check out the other video on the screen right here. Thanks for watching this one all the way to the end. I'll catch you all next time, and do take care.